Breaking news. The Fujifilm GFX 100 Mark II has leaked. That is a medium format 100 megapixel camera that could cost $10,000. It's going to be the most powerful camera of the year. And we have a picture and all the specifications. Also, we have current sales figures showing who is winning. Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, Panasonic, and their specific rankings, as well as a leaked Canon lens coming up. I'll tell you all about it, but first I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is your home on the web for your business, your portfolio, your video reel, or any personal project you might have. Now, you might be hosting that stuff on social media, but social media sucks for that stuff because it's all filled with ads and you can build up a social media following and next thing you know, Facebook is charging you to reach those same people. Use social media to direct people to your Squarespace website with your own custom domain where you control the branding, the font, the colors, the entire style is yours to define starting at squarespace.com slash Tony. They'll give you a free trial, no credit card required. And when you love it, use the coupon code Tony and that will get you 10% off. Thank you much, Squarespace. First, our top story is that canonrumors.com says a new Canon RF 50 F1.4 lens is coming. Like, finally, <laughs> finally, they've had an F2 nifty 50 cheap lens. They've had the super high-end 50 F1.2 lens that I'm actually filming this on right now. Gives me that nice bokeh. But people want something in the middle and it's weird that they haven't yet had a 50 F1.4. Like that should have been one of the first lenses. Anyway, it's finally coming, so hold on to your wallet. Now, a couple of amazing news stories coming to us via Fuji Rumors. First, Fuji Rumors shared this stat coming from Nikkei, which is it's like the Japanese stock market news. One of the things that they happen to show is how the various Japanese camera brands are ranked based on camera sales. Now, the one stat we have for this year is total camera sales. This is not mirrorless camera sales. It's not the value of the camera sold, but the actual number of digital cameras. And in a big first place is Canon with 46.5% and, and gaining slightly, gaining 0.7 points over the past. Sony is at 26.1% and they lost almost a full percentage point, mostly to Canon, but also to Nikon pulling up in third at 11.7%. Now, that's a pretty distant Third, one out of nine cameras is sold by Nikon. And that's not just mirrorless cameras, but I bet most of those are DSLR cameras. But still, Nikon has been making some real progress with the Z8 and Z9. Those have been popular. In fourth place, we have Fujifilm with a little bit under 6%. And, well, they lost a tenth of a percent. And Panasonic's at 4.2% and dropping. Now, that accounts for 94.3% of the market, which means 5.7% of the market isn't accounted for. That goes to Olympus, Pentax, and any other Japanese manufacturer that you might be able to think of. Now, these numbers are different than the numbers you might have heard, which Sony's often telling us that they are number one, but they tend to break that down, like they're number one in interchangeable lens, full-frame mirrorless cameras, which probably is the most important segment, but it's not the only segment. Fact is, Canon is leading by a big margin because they still sell a whole bunch of DSLRs and a lot of lower-end DSLRs. So they might not be making as much money as some of the competitors, but they are winning in this particular metric. Now, one scary number you see in the upper left corner there is the total number of units sold, and that is at 7.2 million units, and that is a 15% drop. Now, the fact is the camera market's been up and down because we had the pandemic and then we had a recovery from the pandemic and now inflation is making everything kind of unaffordable and cameras aren't really a necessity anymore. So I don't know if that's a permanent downturn or just temporary, but let's get right to the top story, which is the leaked Fujifilm GFX 100 Mark II. Now, to refresh your memory, the original Fujifilm GFX 100 was the first like 100 megapixel medium format camera it has a big Sony, bigger than full frame sensor in there. And it blew everyone away. It was really interesting in that it had a massive top display. It had a huge format body with a vertical grip integrated into it and a removable, tiltable viewfinder, which meant it could be used in some really novel ways, but it also had some serious drawbacks. So 
After that, Fuji released the GFX 100S, which was a smaller form factor, medium format, 100 megapixel camera. Basically the same sensor, but a, a smaller body, no integrated vertical grip. Now, Fuji is sort of taking the best of those two cameras and combining them into the Mark II, an incredibly powerful camera that fixes a lot of the problems that the predecessor had. First, the size is going to be similar to that of the GFX 100S, according to Fuji rumors. And please go get this stuff from the source at Fuji rumors, because I can't bring it to you that fast. I follow them on my RSS feed, but they also make YouTube videos. For those of you that do want it to be big, there will be an optional battery grip, kind of like the Sony A1 has an optional battery grip. I prefer that. Sometimes I want to travel light. Sometimes I want the vertical grip, so I'd rather be able to take it off. It will have a full-sized HDMI port and an Ethernet port for those of you who are tethering and you want to be able to offload files really quickly. Talking about the physical design of it, something kind of confusing is the rumors are saying it's going to have an angled top plate. And the Fuji rumors guy is insistent that this is true. Nobody exactly knows what that means, but my interpretation of it is the top plate that we see here on my uh, X-H2, it's flat. It's parallel to the bottom and the top of the camera. I think angled top plate means it'll just be tilted towards the photographer. And that way, you know, sometimes you have the camera up on a tripod at eye level, you can't see it, but if it were tilted down, you'd be able to see it a little bit better. That's my interpretation of it. Like the Fuji X-T5, it'll have a three-way tilting screen, so it'll tilt up and down, and then it will also tilt to the side, but it will not flip forward because for some reason people hate having that as an option. Just like the GFX 100 original, it will have a removable electronic viewfinder. So you could completely take it off and just use the rear screen if you wanted to travel light, or you could attach their tiltable electronic viewfinder, which allows you to use the electronic viewfinder, block out all the sun, even when looking down on the camera. That's really useful for landscape photography where you're frequently putting the camera like right on the ground so you can get a nice log or some rocks in the foreground. And the electronic viewfinder is greatly improved with a 9.44 million dot viewfinder. That's a weird way to measure, but that resolution works out to 2048 by 1536, which is better than HD, worse than 4K. But that is the state of the art for electronic viewfinders. That's what Sony puts in their top end cameras and it's a beautiful viewfinder. The GFX 100S, the smaller version, has a relatively low resolution 3.7 million dot viewfinder and the original GFX 100 had a 5.76 million dot viewfinder. So that will be a noticeable improvement for shooters on those platforms. Now, the sensor itself is going to be a 102 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. That's just standard modern sensor. And like the GFX 100 with the latest firmware update, it will produce 400 megapixel pixel shift files. That's where the sensor sort of moves in four different directions and combines them all together to create an outrageously high resolution image. And I wish I had more specific information, but the sensor is going to have a faster readout. That is huge because the sensor in the original GFX 100 and GFX 100S was terribly slow to read out. It basically made video and the electronic shutter next to useless. If you were reading out at 16-bit RAW files, it read the sensor in about a third of a second. If anything in the frame moved enough to be detected in one third of a second, it would appear wobbly. So you could literally just be taking the portraits with somebody moving like this and you would see weird little bends and stuff. That only occurs when using the electronic shutter because it does have a mechanical shutter on it. You could also mitigate that by shooting slightly lower quality RAW files and that would get you to one sixth of a second but still really low. Anyway, that slow readout speed basically made video and silent shooting next to unusable except in the most still situations like fine art reproductions. The GFX 100 Mark II will also have a higher frame rate at 8 frames per second. That's still low by modern standards, but that big mechanical shutter needs to move a bigger distance on a medium format sensor and it is a big improvement from the 5 frames per second that we had on the original GFX 100 and GFX 100S. It's a pro camera, so of course it will have two card slots, but the rumor is that it will be one CF Express Type B card and one SD card. And I think that's a mistake. I definitely think it should have two CF Express Type B cards. That means if you wanted to write raw to both cards, it's all going to be bottlenecked by the SD card, and that's going to really slow things down and cause things to buffer. On a big, huge, large format camera like this, it should definitely be two CF Express Type B cards. That's what the Nikon Z9 has. 
They're saying they're going to improve the autofocus with the latest subject tracking and it will have the fastest autofocus of any GFX camera. Now, they're saying GFX camera and not any Fuji camera because it's not going to outdo the X-H2 here because I'm sure the sensor readout speeds aren't going to be as fast even though they will be improved. And that means that it won't be able to scan the entire sensor and follow moving subjects quite as quickly. It's necessarily going to be slower because the sensor is bigger and slower. It's not optimized for things like sports or wildlife. It is optimized for portraits and studio work and landscapes. But they will put in the latest subject tracking, which I think means the wide variety of things that we have in the latest version of the X-H2, you know, trains and cars and animals and such. That will really help because in our previous experience with the GFX cameras, even just detecting an eye in a portrait was pretty unreliable and meant that we basically got better results using full frame cameras. But if they can get that eye detect autofocus working, that'll be a big improvement and I can't wait to test it. Be sure to subscribe because we will test out this camera. This will also be a huge advantage against the closest competitors, which is the Hasselblad X2D 100C, a camera we recently spent some time with that we find absolutely amazing. But the biggest disadvantage is that the autofocus, there's nothing smart about it at all. You basically, in practice, I ended up using a single center autofocus point and just focus and recompose like in an old DSLR. There's no eye detect or subject detection at all. So Fuji is miles ahead in that way, but they are behind in one way we'll talk about in just a second. They're also going to be adding some video features to this camera, though I think... Why bother? I don't think this is going to be a video camera for anybody, but it will support 8K video. They didn't specify the frame rate, so that could be 24 frames per second. I wouldn't be surprised if they're working around slower sensor readout speeds, but maybe it's 30. They did say it'll support 4K 60, but they don't say if there's a crop or not. Often there's going to be a crop, especially if they're struggling with those readout speeds. It will have 10-bit 422 video, which just means more latitude for doing editing and posts without seeing artifacts. And it will record ProRes internally. You don't need that, I don't need that, but some big video production places just have an entirely ProRes workflow, and so that can be a requirement, and that's why they kind of throw that in there. It will support an external cooling fan. They have a fan that attaches to the back to just improve recording times, and it's kind of standard. It, like, screws right on there. Finally, Fuji users have been asking for this kind of simple thing forever. You'll be able to touch a subject and have it track. Right now, you can't really do that on the other cameras, so that is a big improvement, and I think hopefully we'll see that in firmware updates rolled out to the other Fuji cameras. Other software-based video features are a waveform monitor, Again, that's something only the serious video users might ever take advantage of, and I don't think they're going to be drawn to this camera. But Fuji has a fixed cost to develop something like a waveform monitor and build it into their software platform, so why not roll it out to every camera, even if it's not a video-first camera? It will also have an anamorphic mode. Anamorphic lenses are frequently used in cinema. You'll recognize their characteristics, which are an oval-shaped bokeh and flaring that is like long and wide like that. The sensor stabilization is supposed to be improved, working at up to eight stops. Something people are concerned about is the sync speed. The current GFX cameras have a sync speed of 1 125th of a second. If you don't know what that means, go back and watch a recent review of the Hasselblad 28 millimeter lens where I showed off the benefits of the leaf shutter built into the lens that it basically gives you an unlimited sync speed that we found in practice we could sync it up to 1 640th of a second. That is going to be a huge advantage over the Fuji competition for anybody who might be using strobes either indoors or outdoors. So leaf shutters, unlimited sync speed is the best. The A1's 1 400th sync speed is the second best. The Z9 at 1 1 60th of a second is pretty bad. And the GFX series at 1 1 25th of a second is unacceptable to a lot of people using strobes. So many people are asking that the shutter be sped up, but the shutter has a bigger surface area to cover it. And that's one disadvantage of medium format cameras. And one of the reasons medium format cameras have traditionally had a leaf shutter built into the lens. So will Fuji improve this? I definitely hope so, but we don't yet know the answer. The Fujifilm GFX 100 Mark II, according to FujiRumors.com, is coming on September 12th, 2023. So be sure to subscribe because as soon as we get our hands on one, we will publish a full review and tell you whether or not it's worth spending your money on. 
And now the question is how much money? The original GFX 100 was $10,000 and still sells for like $9,500, though I see used prices for close to $3,000, so it might be a good time to pick one up used. The GFX 100S MSRP is $6,000. The closest competitor, the Hasselblad X2D 100C, has a similar sensor and sells for $8,200. So what do I think this new camera is going to be? I'm just taking a guess here, but I think the price is going to be lower than the original GFX 100 because I think they want to sell more. And since I think they're combining the GFX 100 and GFX 100 S, I think they're going to drop the price down to $8,500. In the comments down below, tell me what you think of the upcoming GFX 100 Mark II. Is anybody going to buy it? Are you excited for it? And which of those specs are you actually disappointed in? And don't forget to visit our sponsor for any web presence you might need. Any new idea you have that you want to share with the world, start at squarespace.com slash Tony. You can just try it out for completely free. See how easy it is to pick a template that matches your style and then customize it until it's perfect. Drag in your pictures, your videos, and launch it to the world with your own custom domain name. I get emails at northropphotography.com instead of gmail.com. Gmail.com is not professional. Get your own domain name from Squarespace at squarespace.com slash Tony and try it out for free. When you love it, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Bye.